Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about gift ideas for young for beginner artists. I'm going to be talking about some different gift ideas for what you can get an artist in terms of art supplies because oftentimes that's what they're going to want. Um, I know that for me when I was a younger artist there would be lots of people who while they were well-meaning they got me art supplies that were very cheap and inexpensive and it showed. <laughs> And so maybe you want to get them a, a gift that they can actually use. You can give this to your artist friend and you're going to actually be able to get some use out of it. You can almost put together a starter kit for your friend and um, enable them to be able to start, you know, in a certain medium right away. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that most of what I have in the description is going to be affiliate links. So if you purchase through them, I will get a small commission. Um, just want to have that disclosure. Um, so before you go off and try to buy them a gift, I really suggest doing a le at least a little bit of research to figure out what kind of art they're into. Not all of them are going to necessarily appeal to the person that you're buying art supplies for. So I really suggest looking into it and seeing what kind of art, uh, art your friend is into. Um, you can maybe talk to their family members or maybe even look at their Instagram. They probably follow artists that do the kind of art that they would like to be doing. So that can kind of inform your decisions when you go in and look into purchasing um, art supplies for them. So the first category is what I would call absolute beginner or pen and ink. This is for somebody who um, maybe you know a young teenager who's, you know, 13, 14 or so, and they have a really, you know, strong interest in art, but up to date, they've only really had like a classic yellow pencil and printer paper available to them, which you can do quite a, a decent amount with that, but maybe they want to be able to do more and like experiment a little bit more. So some things that I would suggest getting, um, your artist friend, a Stadler pen pencil set, Copic fineliner pens, or Faber-Castell fineliner pens. Um, I prefer the Faber-Castell because I found that in my years of using Copic fineliner pens that they tend to leak ink and run out really quickly. So a Pentel brush pen, those are really inexpensive and um, especially if your friend is into comic books and that's kind of like a standard. Um, as far as like uh, portable brush pens. Um, another good one is Polinsky Series 7 um, brush. It's like a fine liner brush and some ink. Uh, you can do Speedball India ink. It's a little bit more of the mid-range price point. These days the ink that I like is um, Noodler's Bulletproof ink. I really like that one. Um, it's like I don't know what they did to that ink, but it's so strong, like you literally have to laser it off to get it off the paper once it's dry. It's crazy. Another like kind of starter gift that you could get them is a set of Prismacolor pencils. Starter uh, size would be around the 36 set. Um, if you want to bump it up to the next set, which I think is, I want to say 72 pencils, um, that would be another good one. It just gives them more options. If you're friend doesn't have a sketchbook um, and you want to get them one, I really just suggest not going with some sort of store brand one like this. Because sketchbooks are really inexpensive for a reason. They're not very high quality. I will go for something that is at least like the Canson brand, like that. Or, um, this isn't a sketchbook, it's watercolor paper, but uh, Strathmore, that's another good brand. Um, so if you're in the store or you're, you know, you know, looking at them in person, then those are the brands that you want to go towards. You don't want to go for store brands because they usually aren't very good quality. The next, um, category is the markers um, and a good brand is, um, Prismacolor or Copic. Those are two very well-known brands in terms of markers. Uh, they have, a fine tip and then they have a brush tip and they blend really well with, uh, together. If you're going to get markers and they don't have like hardly any um, art supplies, I would at least get some pens to go with it like the Faber-Castell fineliner pens. 
And if you're gonna get markers, I really would suggest getting a render sketchbook. Okay, next up, we have the gouache category. Um, so gouache is a paint that a lot of illustrators use. Um, it's a really interesting paint in terms of like, use like acrylic paints, which we'll talk about acrylic in a minute, but um, it also can be watered down and use a little bit more like watercolor. And aside from that, from what I understand, you can re-wet gouache and um, like after it's dried and blend it again and it, it can re-wet for up to a year, which is pretty interesting and it's very unique to this type of paint. Um, a good starter uh, kit for gouache is the Windsor Newton Designer Gouache or the Holbein Aquila um, set. For gouache, you don't want to get a sketchbook paper. The sketchbook paper um, is going to be too lightweight and it's going to buckle and warp um, if you add any, any wet mediums to it. So um, if you want to get something that you're friend can use for like pretty much a variety of mediums like pen and ink, pencil, gouache, etc. Um, then you can get the mixed media sketchbook. Mine is very well loved. Or um, if you want to give them a set that's specifically geared towards gouache, I would actually suggest Bristol um, board. It's, it's kind of like a really thick paper that can take not a ton of water, but a fair amount of water. So it's really um, one of the best papers for something like gouache. For gouache also, I would suggest getting a palette. I got this um, fairly inexpensive 18 well ceramic palette from Amazon. And you can get, um, I would suggest a brush set. There's a pretty inexpensive one um, that I can link uh, in the description. So the next category is watercolor. A really well-known watercolor brand is Daniel Smith Watercolor, and I would suggest their introductory set. In addition to those colors, I would suggest picking up a few extras. Yellow Ochre and Burnt Umber. Those are two that I would suggest getting in addition to the introductory set. And possibly um, Payne's Gray, that's another really popular watercolor. Watercolor brushes, now keep in mind for these following categories, they're all paint categories. And oftentimes when it comes to paint, the highest expense that you're going to come across is watercolor brushes if you're gonna get some good ones. Um, now, at least for watercolor, you can use the same brushes that I linked for the gouache set. Um, but I'll link a, a, a page with a, a set of more premium watercolor brushes from Blick. And um, I would suggest those if you want to get something a little bit nicer. For the paper that you would use for the watercolors, you could get something like the Strathmore watercolor, uh, watercolor paper. Um, another good one is the Canson watercolor sketchbook. Really good price actually, so I would even just pick up two so that way your friend has one to mess up in and then one to do like a little bit better work in after they've kind of like figured out what they're doing in the first one. Um, or if you want to get something a little bit nicer, again, I would go with um, the Arches watercolor pad. Most watercolor artists like hot press because it doesn't have as much texture, um, so that would be one that I would suggest. And then for the palette, you could do the same 18 well palette that I suggested for the gouache uh, paints, or you could do the um, butcher tray palettes that uh, I'll link, have linked in the description below. Okay, next up is acrylic paint. So for acrylics, um, I would suggest as far as like introductory acrylics, you should get the Liquitex. Um, brand. For the acrylics and the oil paints, as far as canvas goes, I would get packs of canvas panels. That was something like this. Like it has canvas on the front that they can paint on and it's on some sort of like, um, I don't know what's in here, some sort of MFD or something like that or MDF, I forget what it's called. And then um, a paper backing. Um, try to avoid getting canvas from places like Michael's because they don't have very good quality canvas. For paintbrushes, you're going to want to get some uh, synthetic paintbrushes. Usually when you go with natural paintbrushes, 
they're a lot more expensive. Um, so synthetic is usually cheaper. Um, I'll put a list of sizes that I suggest for um, getting started with paintbrushes um, on the screen. So that way you have kind of a, a guide. But to go with the paints, you're gonna wanna get yourself some medium or get them some medium actually. Um, so what this does is this kind of helps to um, like water down, so to speak, the paint. So that way it's not as opaque, which um, can be useful in certain situations, like if you're trying to blend colors. This one is um, Golden GAC 100. And then this other one is Golden Matte Medium. So this one dries in more of a matte finish and then this one dries in more of a glossy finish. I tend to prefer the matte because um, usually when I finish my artwork, if I'm doing acrylic painting, I want to be able to scan it in and if it has a glossy finish, then the scanner picks that up and it reflects black. So it kind of, it, it does funny stuff to the painting. Then as far as a palette, this palette that I'm suggesting can be used for either the um, acrylic paints or the oil paints. Um, you could do a Mako Paragona Glass Artist Palette. Um, you could do that one or you can do, um, it's called Palette Pads. It basically, it's pieces of paper that are nice and thick and they have like a coating on them and they come in a pad just like this. Last but not least for, um, I would suggest this even for oil paints, but acrylic paints too, is a palette knife. Um, this actually is really useful and recommended because otherwise you're gonna be mixing paint with your paintbrushes, which is not ideal because paint can get way up in the ferrule of the brush and kind of ruin your paintbrush. And you don't wanna do that, especially if you have nice brushes. Um, you definitely wanna be mixing your paint with a palette knife. Next up is oil paints, um, a really highly recommended brand of oil paint is Gamblin. Um, again, you want to get them canvas panels. You can do either natural or synthetic brushes. Um, but again, if you're trying to save a little bit of money, go with a synthetic. And then if you're going to get oil paints, you're going to want to get a mineral spirit. So go with the Gamzol Mineral Spirit by Gamblin. Um, and again, you can get the glass artist palette or the, um, palette pads, and a palette knife. And the last category is digital art. So if your artist is trying to get into digital art, then I would recommend um, getting them, if they don't have already, a um, tablet that connects to their computer. There are two brands that are fairly well known. The more budget brand is called Huion. Is I'm sorry if you can hear my baby screaming. I'm trying to finish this up, but she's she's hungry. Well-known brand that's like kind of the name of the game in terms of uh, digital art is Wacom. You can get like the most budget one if they don't have like any tablet whatsoever. I'm sure they'd be happy with it, if, especially if they're a younger artist. Um, if they have like the most budget one, then maybe try getting them one that's like a step up that has the display. If they don't have it already, then maybe you can pay for a year subscription to something like um, Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. They have packages for those creative um, apps that Adobe offers, and those are pretty much the standard in the digital illustration world. So I would really recommend those. Or an alternative option is, for instance, if you're getting your um, friend something like an iPad. So you could do an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil and um, there's a relatively inexpensive app that they can use on the iPad called Procreate and that is something that a lot of artists these days are using whether or not they're technically digital illustration artists a lot of them um, a lot of artists use that for their illustrations. Anyways, guys, I hope that was helpful. This little gift guide for your friend who is either a young artist or just, just getting started. Um, and hopefully you found some value out of it. If you're just getting started in art as well, it'll give you kind of a jumping off point for um, what to get to get started in different mediums in art. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.